Well, hello there, and welcome back to GetChemistryHelp.com. Now, in this video, I'm going to work some practice problems showing you how to predict the products of double displacement reactions. Now, we're going to work with all the various types of double displacement reactions, including precipitation reactions, which are those that can form solids, neutralization reactions, or acid-base reactions, and gas evolution reactions. So if you miss any of those lessons, you may want to watch those first before trying these problems. You can also go to GetChemistryHelp.com and print out a PDF worksheet of all of these equations so you can follow along with me as I work them. And the last thing you might need is a copy of the solubility rules, which is also available at GetChemistryHelp.com under the Resources tab. But otherwise, let's go ahead and jump in here. Predict the products and write balanced equations for the following double displacement reactions. So the first one is lithium carbonate reacts with magnesium bromide. Well, lithium is Li positive, carbonate CO3 2 negative, so lithium carbonate must be Li2 CO3. And if you do have your solubility rules handy, you see that all lithium containing compounds are aqueous. How about magnesium bromide? Well, magnesium is in group 2 of the periodic table, so 2 positive. Bromide comes from bromine, so it's one away from the noble gases, so one negative. So magnesium bromide, MgBr2. And as you see on your solubility rules there, bromides are generally soluble. Unless it was with silver, mercury, one, or lead, two, which it's not. So what do our products be? Well, we just swapped the carbonate with the bromide. So now lithium goes with bromide. So that would be LiBr. Lithiums are soluble, so aqueous and magnesium with carbonate, so that would be MgCO3. And if you look at your rules for carbonates, they're generally insoluble or solid. So this is a precipitation reaction because we formed a precipitate or a solid. Last step, let's balance this. Two lithiums on the reactants, one on the products, so we'll make that two. Now we've got two bromides on the products and two bromides on the reactants. One magnesium on the reactants, one of the products. One carbonate on the reactants, one of the products. So we're balanced. How about number two, iron two sulfate? Well, iron two, that just means Fe2 positive. The Roman numeral is the charge. Sulfate, that's SO4 two negative. So iron two sulfate would be Fe SO4. Now if you look on your solubility rules, sulfates are generally soluble, so aqueous. How about sodium phosphate? Well, sodium is Na positive because sodium is in group one, so it's one positive. Phosphate's one of those polyatomics we know, PO43 negative. So what would sodium phosphate be? Well, Na3PO4. And sodium containing compounds are generally soluble, so aqueous. So we react these, we swap the sulfate and the phosphate, so iron two phosphate. That would be Fe3, parenthesis, PO4, parenthesis 2. Now phosphates are generally insoluble, solid, except for with lithium, sodium, potassium, and ammonium. So this is a solid. And then sodium with sulfate would be Na2SO4. Sodium containing compounds are soluble, so aqueous. So here again, we have another precipitation reaction where we've made a solid. Last step, we gotta balance this. So one iron on the reactants, three on the products, so let's make this three irons. Now we've got three sulfates on the reactants, so we need three sulfates on the products. Now that also made six sodiums on the products, so we need six on the reactants. So three times two would be six, which also makes two phosphates, and we have two phosphates. So that's a balanced reaction. How about number three? This says nitric acid reacts with lithium sulfide. So what's nitric acid? Well, ic acid, we know that comes from eight, so nitrate is NO3 negative. If it's an acid, it's combined with H plus, so it must be HNO3. And of course, acids are generally aqueous. Reacts with lithium sulfide. Well, lithium is in group one, so one positive. Sulfide comes from sulfur. Sulfur is two away from the noble gases, so two negative. So Li2S. All lithium containing compounds are soluble, so aqueous. Now let's predict our products. So we're gonna swap out the nitrate for the sulfide and make hydrogen with sulfide. So that would become H2S. So what's the state on that? 
Well, remember, this is one of our special gas evolution products. This is actually that stinky, rotten, egg-smelling sulfur gas. So this is H2S gas. What's the other product? Lithium with nitrate. So that would be LiNO3. And all lithium-containing compounds and all nitrate compounds are soluble. So this one is definitely aqueous. Well, let's balance it. One hydrogen on the reactants, two on the products. So we'll make this two hydrogens. Now that gives us two nitrates, so we need two on the products, so make that two. Now we have two lithiums on the products, and we already have two on the reactants. One sulfur, one sulfur, so that one's balanced. How about number four? Nickel Roman numeral two chloride. What does that mean? Well, nickel two means nickel with a two positive charge. Chloride would be Cl negative, so we'd have NiCl2. And that's soluble because chlorides are generally soluble unless they're with silver, mercury-1, or lead-2, and nickel-2 isn't any of those. How about potassium bromide? Well, potassium, group 1, so 1 positive. Bromide from bromine, 1 away from noble gases, so 1 negative, so KBr. All potassiums are soluble, so aqueous. Okay, now let's swap the chloride and the bromide. So nickel-2 bromide, that would be Ni. Br2. Again, bromides are generally soluble, so aqueous. Plus potassium with chloride, that would be KCl. Potassiums are soluble, so aqueous. Oh, well, look, all of our reactants and all of our products came out to be aqueous. So, what does that mean? That basically means that the nickel 2 chloride and potassium bromide, they all dissolved in water, they were soluble, made a bunch of happy ions, but Nothing ever combined to make a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So if nothing like that happened, then we really have no reaction. So we'll just write NR. We don't need to balance it or anything. Just write NR. How about ammonium permanganate reacts with lithium hydroxide? Well, ammonium, that's NH4 positive. Permanganate is MnO4 negative. So ammonium permanganate would be NH4 negative. MnO4. Well, that's going to be aqueous because all ammoniums are soluble. Reacts with lithium hydroxide. Lithium is in group 1, so positive. Hydroxide is OH negative, so lithium hydroxide would be LiOH. And all lithium containing compounds are soluble, so aqueous. How about our products? Well, we're going to swap out the permanganate for hydroxide. So ammonium hydroxide would be NH4OH. Aha, well this again is one of our gas evolution products. So it's not really ammonium hydroxide, it's really water with ammonia gas dissolved in it. But again, I won't break it up until I'm sure it's balanced. So let's go ahead and finish out our products. Well, lithium permanganate, that would be LiMnO4. All lithiums are soluble, so aqueous. Okay, now let's balance it. One ammonium on the reactants, one on the products. One permanganate on the re reactants, one on the products. One lithium on the reactants, one on the products. One hydroxide on the reactants, one on the products. So it is balanced, so now we can just go ahead and we could erase this, if I had an eraser, and we could replace it with ammonia gas dissolved into water, which is what it really is. Again, the order here doesn't matter. You could have written the water first, then the ammonia. You could have written the lithium permanganate first, then the ammonia in the water. It really doesn't matter, as long as you have all of these on the product side. And also notice this is still balanced, of course, because ammonium hydroxide has the same number of nitrogens, hydrogens, and oxygens as ammonia and water do. Okay, our last one. Barium hydroxide combines with hydroiodic acid. Well, barium is in group 2, so 2 positive. Hydroxide is OH negative. So barium hydroxide would be BaOH, parenthesis 2. And hydroxide is generally solid, but with barium it is slightly soluble. So we'll go ahead and put aqueous on here. Hydroiodic acid. Well, we know from our lesson on naming that hydro and ic acid means the anion was ied, so iodide would be I negative. So with H plus to make it an acid, it must be HI and aqueous. 
So now we swap our partners out and make new products. So barium with iodide, that would be BaI2. And all iodides are generally soluble, except again, silver, mercury one, and lead. Barium is not one of those, so this would be aqueous. And the other product would be hydrogen with hydroxide. Now remember, that's the same as water, which is liquid. Remember, hydrogen with hydroxide is the same thing as water. Okay, well, let's balance it. Well, again, remember, when you're balancing something that has hydrogen and hydroxide on one side and water on the other, balance the hydrogens in the acid separately from the hydrogens in the hydroxide. So one barium on the reactants, one on the products, two hydroxides on the reactants, only one on the product, so we'll make that two. Now we have two hydrogens, so we need two hydrogens over here. Then two iodides, oh, we have two iodides. So there you go, that reaction is also balanced. Well, I hope you enjoyed these practice problems on double displacement reactions. Be sure and click on that subscribe button down below so you can be notified as soon as new video lessons are posted. And I'd love for you to leave me a comment and let me know what you thought. So come back and visit me next time here at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.